All right, Chef Marcus is still still going strong. Tight, huh? yeah. I love it. <laughs> Getting um, through it. What do we got over here? We got a basket of veg. Yeah, basket of veg that are, you know, I like to spend a little bit of time chopping up different uh, shapes and, you know, changing that up every week, but this is just gonna get stir fried. Yeah, great addition to a little bit of meat and starch for every single meal. Cool, so we're staying on the lines of meal prep, guys. It's all gonna come together at the end. Hang around up next is our stir fried veg. All right, Marcus, show me what's up, man. What do you want to start with? Let's just grab these uh, zucchini, zucchini and we'll start to chop them up. I'm just gonna go with my style over yeah, here and then I'm gonna compare to what you do okay. and see what you have at the end of this. I wanna say that it was zucchini last week that I got nicked on, on my finger. Oh, okay, when you were. Yeah, so I'm gonna be a little bit more delicate cautious. today. And then maybe one of these guys. Ooh. Is this kind of like therapeutic for you? Do you enjoy? That's exactly yeah, what I like to tell people about yeah. it. I'm like, when I'm like chopping vegetables more so than anything else, just, I don't know. I it's feel like it zone. totally gets me in the zone. I, I did have like a, a moment when I was, uh, I was in medical school and I was transitioning away from like, I was, I realized that I wasn't going to do medicine for my career. Mm -hmm. And I was kind of at like a, I don't know, I'll call it like a breaking point, but I was like, I just need to get into something totally different. And I really was strongly considering going to like culinary school. And really? Just switching okay. completely from like the health science, yeah. health and fitness world over to, uh, you know, cooking. And didn't know exactly where that was going to land me, but I really had a strong pull towards it. My brother's girlfriend at the time was a chef. Um, and so just... She seemed to really enjoy the lifestyle, and I don't know. That was like, again, my, my big Food Network days, so I was feeling it. I think just if you have good experiences with like food growing up, and you know, that's just such, a, it can be such like a, I don't know, a really homey, connected feeling, and like so many good memories for me. Um, should we do some of these peppers yeah. now? And what happened? What what was the food situation growing up? Did you guys, your parents were good cooks or? Um, no, not so particularly. I mean, had his own <laughs> yeah, program. they they do have their own program, but I just think that, like, with my my grandparents, uh, or excuse me, my grandmother, she was um, this great cook, this great Italian cook, yeah. and whenever they would come to town, and and we would have these just like great family meals. Um, I don't know. I was just really. Always, food was always something that felt really good to me mm. growing up with my family. And and then once I got into, you know, my own cooking, my like early 20s and cooking for my family and experimenting with all different types of food, you know, I just saw like how much it could bring people together and be like a relaxed right. time. And, and then I think the other big part of it for me was like getting connected to the ingredients that I was cooking with and going to like farmer's markets. And then, you know, like my ideal Sunday was go to the farmer's market, buy a bunch of fresh stuff, maybe go to the gym, maybe play a little golf, come back in the afternoon, start prepping, you know, for dinner and then cooking something for, you know, my family or friends or whoever was around. And I don't know. I mean, I guess that's not exactly the, uh, the life of somebody who's working in, you know, the food industry. Right. It's a little less glamorous yeah. than that, but that's the kind of feeling that I was like, yeah. oh, can I recreate this every day of my life and get paid to do it? That would be so great. That was kind of before you got into competitive fitness. Is that how you refer to it? Yeah, that's pretty much the time where I was like not doing competitive fitness. I was just a, you know, recreational exerciser. I had done some college sports, uh, played college soccer. Um, but I hadn't really found like my passion for, you know, you know, competing in fitness and then certainly a, a career in fitness yet. But it kind of transitioned around that time. It was like I got into after medical school, I got into, uh, you know, moved back home, trying to kind of land on my feet. What's my next step? Was I going to kind of go back into the health sciences somewhere else or was I going to try something in fitness? And um, it was like when I got connected with a, a local CrossFit affiliate and started okay. training there and coaching there. Um, why don't we do some of this? Broccoli. Broccoli. Mm -hmm. And what, where was that? That's in, um, down in San Rafael, California. Um, so I was 
Yeah, my, my parents, uh, you know, live in Marin County. So I moved home and started working out at this gym called TJ's Gym, which was oh, yeah. uh, the, the gym that I worked out at. And then I ended up owning um, one of the affiliates there. Um, CrossFit Mill Valley, TJ's Gym Mill Valley was my box for a number of years. Okay. Um, and that's where I kind of found my like, you know, stride as a competitive exerciser. <laughs> Which like turned out to be really, my, yeah. I do, yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, people uh, kind of joke about it. Or, we joke about it a little yeah. bit, but it's, uh, you know, it's true. It's like we're, we're training, we're doing something that a lot of people only see as exercise and they see as like a way to get, make them healthier and more, you know, fit. And here we're doing it at kind of a, a higher level that ends up becoming sport and people in, are interested in watching. Yep. How are my chopping skills doing here? You look great, dude. You look great. I like it, what I'm seeing. Do you cut the ends off of these or how do you? You know, usually I've, when, yes, I do. I do or? like to cut them off. I am not a fan of getting a big stem in my mouth. Those don't go down so well. Do you know the French term for this one? The um, Le cover, they call it. Whoa, so it's how I was like... gonna pronounce that was not gonna sound like that at all. <laughs> but same spelling, right? Same spelling, same spelling yeah. yeah. China brought that up earlier. She's called it Heracotes Verts or something like that. That, that sounds but. that sounds like most how most Americans would probably pronounce that if they saw it. More? How many do you think? Do you I'm thinking maybe just we don't. Handful? I think once we get these, that'll be pretty good. Okay. I'm gonna fill up this pan, and I just like to not fill up the pan too much. It's overcrowded. It's overcrowded, right? Did you feel pressure to go into the medical? Like medical field because your dad or? Um, it, I wouldn't call it pressure. I mean, nobody ever said like, hey, you have to go do this. But the way I describe it to people is like, you, growing up in a household of medical professionals, my yeah. mom and my dad are both in the medical field. Yeah. My brother was in the medical field. You know, and just seeing them enjoy what they do okay. for work. Cool. And that's the that's the career path that provided the lifestyle that, you know, yeah. I grew up in, which yeah. I really, Enjoyed. came to know and, and love and appreciate yeah. like um, plus on top of that I was actually pretty good at the like at math and science and the health sciences like I had a knack for it yeah. it wasn't a struggle for me to do well in chemistry and math and biology um, so it kind of just made sense but it's like getting on that path of just doing something without actually putting thought to like okay how do I see this in my life in the future mm -hmm. I'm doing it because what's around me it's sort of telling me that I should do it, but do I really want to be in this field? And then what, did you decide that you did it? Yeah, I think when I got into medical school, I realized that my passion was gonna be more around working with people on, you know, health preventative. care, preventative yeah, health care. Yeah, 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 and, yeah. Um, and not to say that being a doctor means you don't work on preventative right. health care, it's just that so much of what I know can help people feel better on a day-to-day -day basis happens here and in the gym, and that was what really got me excited. Cool. So I like that's that. where I ended up. Yeah. And probably the majority of doctors are overwhelmed with the, you know, treatment of instead of the prevention of. Yeah, right? I mean, it's the, the medical community is not really set up for doctors to be able to, you know prescribe exercise and nutrition in a way that's meaningful. They can tell you, hey, you gotta exercise and you know eat right and lose a little bit of weight, that's gonna help what you have. Right. But then it's like, well, who's How implementing that? How does that, that? look? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that's, do you follow like the exercise is medicine kind of stuff that's going on or like? I don't. CrossFit, I think they're, they're, they're trying to get exercise described as medicine so that way they can regulate it. Mm. Um, and, I, and I don't, I, I think like, Coke and some of the big industry people are behind that. Yeah, that sounds like it's not good. So that that wouldn't yeah. be good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can I borrow your spoon? Sure. Thank um, you. So bacon, a little bacon fat going in here? Just so we yeah, you know, I've just found bacon fat to be such a good cooking fat because oh, yeah. it adds flavor and because we make bacon like you know, Regular. every couple weeks or yeah. every week and there's always a ton of extra use it right oil it's right total utilization 
is the goal, you know? We paid for that. It's it's right there. Why you know a lot of people throw it out or whatever. Right, and actually bacon fat is like got a really good fatty acid profile in terms Does of it? like health. Yeah, absolutely. Huh. Lots of monounsaturated fatty acids in there. So I people are always reaching for plant based oils and I'm like, yo, animal animal fats are actually super healthy and if you're using them in your cooking, you know, you're cutting down on your omega six fatty right. acid profile. Yep. Yep. from the veggies yeah plant or animal based fats don't have omega as, six as high or, yeah or generally. it's based off of their diet right it's Isn't based off of their yeah. diet so yep. if you're you're buying and you're sourcing good you know animal products you're getting good fat profiles love it dude this is good stuff yeah good stuff what do you think of like to preheat a little bit alone, yeah or? i mean i think it's these things are pretty powerful so that's pretty yeah. hot it's already smoking a little bit but um, I don't know. I usually start with like the ones that are going to take a little longer to. Densest broccoli. Yeah, go broccoli on probably is going to go in, and then I'd go probably with the beans next. And... A little salt, or what do you? Yeah, you I'm a big tomorrow? I'm a big salt, salt and pepper guy as I'm going through this, and then save the, uh, you know, tamari for the end. end. So, I know you mentioned to me that like you're you have this equal parenting goal. You guys are both kind of mm -hmm. splitting that. Yeah. What? Where does the your future of competitive fitness? Where is that? Is, they gonna, is that? Is there one? Or what are your thoughts on that right now? So I'm 33, and with the introduction of like the 35 year old yeah. masters division, I've kind of set my sights on that just because I I know that. You know, our hope is to have, you know, more kids too. And so the next couple of years are going to be pretty focused on that yep. portion of my life. And I've got two seasons to go before I can get back into the master's division. Okay. And I think that that to me feels like something I can really sink my teeth into. And I, I do miss it, um, but I've been so consumed with running business, raising the family. Yep. Um, like just my priorities had to shift a little bit. I couldn't, I didn't feel like I could bring my best self to my competitive life as an athlete. Um, meaning like I couldn't focus on it as much as I had in the past. And I only love to focus on it like, you know, I only love to do it when I can really give it really the attention it, yeah, yeah, yeah. it needs yeah. and it deserves. Especially with like the, the landscape of it now being so competitive and like there's no room to kind of just be half in. I wouldn't be as fulfilled no. doing it. Yeah. yeah. The level, you know, it's, when did you start? What was your first year? My first year of like CrossFit Games stuff was 2010. Okay. So I did like a couple local comps with like my um, teammates at, uh, you know, my gym. We yeah. did some affiliate stuff. And then we went to the, uh, you know, regional competition. Like you just entered. You didn't have to yeah, like, yeah, qualify back that. then. Yeah. There were sectionals, which I did yep. as an individual just for experience. Yeah. And then uh, then we did, um, you know, regionals at, was it like the, somewhere in Los Angeles area or like. Was no, it was at a gym? It was, no, like the regionals was actually at a uh, college. It was like Fullerton, Cal State Fullerton or something like that. Anyway, we did the uh, team thing. We qualified like for the games that year which was like the first year it was at the the home depot center okay. which is what it was called at the time yeah and um yeah it was super fun super hard i remember being at regionals and like going up against teams called invictus and in san francisco crossfit yeah. and like you know like Back they knew what they were doing and we were just like this random yeah. small gym team yeah. um and then from then on i think i competed every single season up until like 2016, I that was my last, last time I was year. in the game. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Nice. How are we looking here? Do we wanna? Yeah, let's start to load it I up. I think with all some... this is kind of in the same category. Is I think so. Okay. Let's yeah. Do that. I'm with you. Yeah, I mean, I had a similar what 2009. We did the. We you could just enter a team right. at regionals, right? I remember they had sectionals. I think at 2009, mm -hmm. you could just enter a team to the games. Oh, I don't think they you? had regionals yet. Oh, okay. I don't think so. I think that the first year that the teams actually had to do any type of uh, qualifications was 10. 10 I could okay. be wrong about that. No, you, you, I think you're right, actually. Because uh, 9 yeah, was, it was Roma 10. still. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 10. that was when I... We had a team, but we were in a similar... 
no, I wouldn't say similar, but we showed up and we're like, yeah, let's see what happens. And then this, we were in the mountain division, so they had people from like Chicago, all the way from Chicago, coming to Colorado. <laughs> and these, like you said, these were like experienced people who had already been doing this, and they just, we didn't stand a chance, man. It was nuts. And then the sectionals were like the, whoever hosted it got to write the workouts. Right, right. Yeah. I remember that. That was cool. That was. Uh, and then you got to try each like Hawaii sectional. Like, totally. You, you try all their workouts. And, yeah, I remember that. And I remember my, like the the one of the coaches I was kind of following um, at the time was hosting a regional, and he had posted these workouts. And so of course I wanted to try those. And um, I think it was like the Canada West or something region. Uh, um, but yeah, man, that was. Who was it? Oh, it was OPT. Yeah, it was yeah. James. Yeah. yeah. So. And he had his like shack gym or garage totally, gym outside. Yeah. Of it was a, it was his it was like a, a house converted into yeah, a gym. Yeah. So they like tore out some balls and made that nuts. I love it. Yeah. And you're still in with OPT now or what? Yeah. You train with him? Um, his one of his like one of his coaches that works for him and worked with them now takes over my training, Mike Lee. Um, but yeah, I've been with that organization for a long time. They just I don't know, I resonated Seems with solid, him after yeah. like 2007, 2008, watching him as an athlete compete. To me, you know, he had, he embodied like what a competitor, you know, I wanted to be as a competitor. Yeah. And then he was also really well spoken and had obviously like a, you know, thought a lot about fitness and was uh, being really thoughtful about how he was, you know, coaching people. And um, so I just kind of climbed on board and it's been a really great resource for me for years and like how to, be a coach, be an athlete, all of that. Yeah, I would, I'm with you on that. Like, he's a pretty stand-up guy. I liked, do you remember those purple weightlifting shoes that he had? Like, <laughs> yeah. back in the, yeah. maybe it was 07. Mm -hmm. He's always had some, some interesting, uh, you know, fashion choices. I think he was rocking the crew, the crew socks before they were okay. cool. And, uh, and that started that, huh? that def well i don't know if he started it i think it was just a canadian thing that was just always a thing that people did how far do you like to take these like we are gonna yeah know, reheat them later in the week kind of thing a little further than this i think keep their color and a little keep bit their of crunch. color yeah. yeah i would actually at this point i would normally just throw i'd throw some tamari in there now just to get a little bit of steam so they you know soften up a little bit cool. and if, if i had another pan i would probably like put it, throw on, it top. on top you want to do that yeah we can do that do you yeah. want to go tamari or just steam them or? we can just do steam for a minute right. were you do you remember like the original like the program i guess you'd call yeah. it remember yeah, those yeah. when those came out yeah i remember when those started coming out and just like i mean i was super fanboy like i was totally into all the people and just watching yeah. everything that was happening yeah and i kind of felt like for the years because i did three years of of team affiliate cup stuff for those years i, I still felt kind of like on a, an outsider just like i'm still a fan yeah. watching the sport um i remember making that transition to like individual competition was like you know felt like a massive leap for me mm. thinking back to that year where we had like i guess 2011 maybe was the first year that they introduced like everyone doing the same workouts but 2010 when people could make up the workouts at regionals yeah gosh i remember thinking about those regionals workouts and they were just like they just seemed so random like yeah. we, were, we were flipping tires and carrying logs like and i don't think any other region ever had any of that going on whatsoever it was like maybe two minutes under a lid and it's yep. like Dude, I'm brought them to life and okay. some tamari it or what? Yeah, a little tamari, a little of this sesame oil. Oh yeah, love it. Look at that color, right? Yeah, it's, that's exactly what it looks like in my kitchen every week. Ooh, ooh. I think they're good to go. I mean, I'd say so. My daughter would eat those up. Should be all about the broccoli or what? Yeah. And you actually, the way you cut your broccoli, that's what she likes. She likes to grab a hold of the oh, stock and well. just go for it. Okay. So we'll transfer this. Again, we're just getting this stuff ready for uh, meal prep plate up, we'll call it. That's right. 
Marcus, we talked a little bit about getting ahead of the ball, like preventive maintenance uh, as far as health and wellness goes. Yep. And this is kind of what that looks like. This is exactly what it looks like in the kitchen. You, you know, you said like, give a lot of people nutrition information and education, mm -hmm. but then they need to see what it actually looks like to practically put it into into their lives. So this and is here it. it is. And totally. what, does it taste good? It tastes amazing it tastes and there's great. tons of color and veggies for you. Yeah. All right guys, so uh, hit the produce section, get in the kitchen and give this a try. We got Chef Marcus and Nick here with our veggies. Stir, Stir fry. fry.